Awesome. So thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Vivita. I'm an AI ML product manager at Spotify. Uh, today, I'm going to take some time to talk about our mission on the ML infrastructure team at Spotify to democratize ML development to fuel the next generation of audio personalization. So if you don't already know, Spotify is an audio streaming service that was launched in 2008. We currently have over 380 million monthly active users a catalog of over 70 million tracks, and over 3.2 million podcasts across 184 markets. Spotify does come in two popular forms. One is a mobile version that you can download on your mobile device and a desktop version as well. Um, a little bit about myself before we dive into the presentation. Uh, as an AI ML product manager at Spotify, I'm currently specifically focused on defining the next generation of machine learning infrastructure I get to work with an incredibly talented team of ML engineers, data scientists, data engineers, UX designers, researchers, you name it. Uh, my role involves working with a lot of different stakeholders with incredibly diverse backgrounds, which of course is really, really important to build cohesive and ethical products in the domain of artificial intelligence. Um, I have a BS in computer engineering from Virginia Tech, as well as a master's in science and computer science, uh, with a specialization in interactive intelligence from Georgia Tech. Some of my interests within the larger fields of AI include AI risk and ethics, uh, human-computer interaction, and knowledge-based artificial intelligence. All right, so we know that Spotify uses ML, but where exactly is the ML implemented? Um, can you guys guess where the ML is in this picture? I'll give you guys 15 seconds to take a look and think about it before I spill the beans. All right, so you guys may have spotted this, but one obvious place Spotify uses machine learning is in apps like Home and Search. Um, Search uses ranking and natural language processing to recommend the best results to users searching for songs, artists, playlists, or podcasts. But let's go ahead and break down the Home application a little bit more. For starters, the shelves that a user sees on their home page and the associated content is driven by machine learning. Even the recently played shelf is personalized to the user's most recently played content and the importance of suggesting a recent play. Um, even the ordering of the shelves that gets shown to a user and the ordering within the shelves is fueled by machine learning. We also have algorithmically generated playlists. Um, perhaps our most well-known ML-driven playlist is Discover Weekly, but that's not our only one. We also have the radio feature, time capsule, your top songs, blend, the list goes on. Uh, even the wrap to your end campaign generates um, playlists use, utilize ML to some degree. And that's not everything. There are a ton of machine learning use cases at Spotify. Uh, the artist selected in a preview is driven by ML along with the cover art. Um, aspects like your affinity towards certain artists, playlists, and albums are modeled based on your interaction with content presented on various screens during your larger in-app listening session. So a lot of the ML-driven experiences that you see right on your home screen with Spotify are made possible by the centralized machine learning infrastructure that is managed by Spotify's machine learning platform team. Our ML platform team consists of 41 contributors that have worked hand-in-hand -hand with ML engineers and data scientists across the company to productionize ML use cases that make Spotify the truly unique and human-driven audio platform that it is. Um, so just wanted to give a quick shout out to my team, along with the many contributors that came before me that may not be depicted on this slide. Being a part of the ML platform team means that we're largely focused on a few different elements as our North Star for product innovation and development. So as a group, we aim to build a platform for ML engineering, simple enough, but we also strive to reduce the cost across the organization to maintain ML applications, look to support state-of-the-art ML problem types, and are laser focused on democratizing ML across the organization to enable ML-driven business impact across a wide variety of dimensions and use cases. The machine learning platform consists of six different products or groups, the first being the feature store team or squad, as we like to call teams internal to Spotify. Um, this team is focused on standardizing components and APIs for offline and online access to data for machine learning or features. The next product is our Kubeflow platform, which I'm specifically the PM for. My squad is focused on creating the tooling, infrastructure, and best practices to develop ML workflows and pipelines at scale for both offline and online production use cases. 
The third team in the platform is focused on creating libraries for efficient processing of catalog audio and podcasts. The fourth squad here is focused on the ML project home experience or a user interface that enables our machine learning teams to collaborate, discover, share, and manage their projects. We also have a serving platform which provides reusable infrastructure as a service and tools for serving a model online. And finally, we have our wonderful ML engagement squad which spans all of the core products in the ML platform and they're largely focused on our objective of democratizing ML at Spotify through education, training, consultations, and partnership with Spotify squads. So as the PM for the Kubeflow platform, I want to spend some time doing a deep dive into our ML development and production experience at Spotify, including our learnings building, a platform to scale offline evaluation and predictions, and our future focus areas to continue to democratize ML development across Spotify. So some quick stats on our platform before we do a bit of a technical deep dive. We currently have about 60 squads across Spotify onboarded to the platform, which enables over 700 users with access. We've trained over 28,000 models and deployed these trained model artifacts to data endpoints in just the year of 2021. And we've also helped orchestrate 85,000 successful pipeline executions in production in 2021. Um, we wholly hope to see these numbers continue to grow in future quarters. Um, every successful product has a specific problem that it seeks to solve, and now I want to spend some time providing some historical context on how the Spotify Kubeflow platform was born and what problems it solves for Spotify ML engineers developing models at scale. So at Spotify, we don't have one centralized ML team that supports the entire organization, but we instead have many small cross-functional teams staffed with ML engineers, data scientists, data engineers, backend engineers, whatever is needed for the unique product that they work on. There are a ton of benefits to having cross-functional teams, but there are associated downsides as well. Um, so while our decentralized teams create a high degree of autonomy, which empowers innovation, these teams historically used very disparate toolkits and managed their own ML infrastructure when it came to developing ML models at scale, which ultimately led to significant reduction in their productivity as developers and increased complexity in managing disparate infrastructure systems. Teams have reported taking weeks on going from ideas to production with issues like scaling training and managing their resources, uh, coordinating daily retraining, and also monitoring their model performance over time. And this really led to some of the mature teams taking the time to build custom solutions and short fixes to the problems mentioned. And ultimately, a lot of the teams reinvented the wheel, either because they weren't aware another team had tackled an issue or because the issue was too specific to their set of tools and couldn't easily be transferred. So for some additional historical context, as Kubeflow Pipelines, which is an open source tooling built by Google for building and deploying ML workflows based on Docker containers, as that gained maturity in the last couple of years across the open source community, we decided to adopt it as a center of our platform offering when it comes to defining packaging and running these complete end-to-end -end ML pipelines at scale, and to address some of the issues we were observing across the ML engineering community at Spotify. And we found that Kubeflow and Kubeflow Pipelines is a good foundation to solve a lot of the aforementioned problems as it, one, makes it very easy for our teams to share components in a standardized manner, which reduces the amount of reinvented wheels. The second is that Kubeflow helps us increase developer productivity when it comes to model iteration because it allows our users to cleanly change their inputs, their data, their parameters without needing to change the core functionality of their code. The third benefit is that it allows our users to worry less around the details of managing resources under the hood, as that's handled by our infrastructure team and, of course, Kubernetes, which is the underlying compute engine to Kubeflow. And most importantly, uh, Kubeflow enables the ML workflows being built at Spotify now to be reproducible and automatically tracked in a reliable manner, which is, of course, really, really important for production models. As mentioned, in order to abstract infrastructure and resource needs and take the pain of infrastructure maintenance away from the autonomous teams across Spotify, we decided to build the centralized offering for all teams to leverage based on Kubeflow pipelines. Um, our own Spotify managed version of this open source offering for all ML teams internal to Spotify focuses more on integrating cleanly with our unique data and for our ecosystem and serving the unique needs of our internal users. Um, our primary users are machine learning engineers and data scientists at Spotify that seek to leverage KF pipelines to more easily take an ML project from idea to production with the removal of the traditional friction points that slow down ML experimentation. And with this managed infrastructure that we provide, we also offer our users an SDK and CLI 
to easily define, compile, and run these KFP pipelines on GCP and interface with our internal data infra. All right, so in addition to open source Kubeflow, we have also standardized on Google's TensorFlow Extended Framework. So TensorFlow Extended, or TFX, is an end-to-end -end platform for deploying production ML pipelines. So when a user is ready to move their model from research to production, TFX actually helps in providing this opinionated and streamlined sequence of components, which are specifically designed for scalable high-performance machine learning tasks. So while Kubeflow Pipelines makes it easy to orchestrate and chain together such components, TensorFlow Extended gives us this opinionated template through these standardized components to help our users safely and reliably productionize their machine learning use cases. So hopefully that provides some good context on why we decided to standardize on Kubeflow and TFX, who our target end users are, and what problems the platform strives to solve at large. So as mentioned, our platform does standardize on Google's TensorFlow Extended Framework, as well as Kubeflow. Uh, this slide gives a good overview of what that opinionated workflow actually looks like with TFX. So here you can see some ML components being leveraged in real production use cases at Spotify, including a component to import your data, a component to generate statistics on your data, a component to generate uh, a schema of your training data, a trainer component, an evaluator component. These are all TFX components that we've standardized within our platform to, again, help a user go to production in a very traceable, reliable, repeatable manner. All right, so hopefully I haven't confused anyone too, too much. I am definitely a visual and hands-on learner. So next, I'd like to walk you guys through specific personalization use case, along with code snippets, to ground our understanding of the software architecture that actually powers such ML use cases. So here, we're specifically going to dive into how can we use ML in conjunction with Spotify's machine learning infrastructure to solve a typical personalization problem? How can we recommend relevant content to users during their in-app session? Obviously, recommending music by average popularity isn't the best solution. It's not personalized, and everyone's taste evolves with time. We have to break this problem down to be personalized to a user-specific preference. So how can we get my girl, Lord, to show up on my home screen recommendations? Let's turn this into an estimation problem. So the probability of Lord showing up on my recommendations on my home screen will be driven by my score of following a specific artist, in this case, Lord based on my in-app interactions while using the Spotify app and specific data which describes me as a unique user. Converting this to an ML problem, of course, involves selecting an algorithm, defining what we're trying to predict in the corresponding label, and defining what features we want to leverage using our domain knowledge of the problem. The next few slides are going to be a little bit low level with us actually going through the code our machine learning engineers have written for this ML use case with Spotify's machine learning infrastructure. But once we have a rough idea of how we want to formulate our problem into a machine learning solution, we can break our solution down according to the TFX workflow supported at Spotify as part of the Kubeflow platform. First, starting with importing our data in the data format supported in Spotify's data infrastructure with the external examples component at the very top, visualizing and validating our imported data with the stats generation and schema generation components following after, uh, moving into the feature transformation component, the trainer component, and finally the evaluator component. Uh, we unfortunately won't have the time to go into all of the code for this today, uh, but the stats generation component is used to compute raw feature statistics such as mean, standard deviation, et cetera, for both training and evaluation data. Um, and the schema generation component actually infers a schema file for the input features that you provide based on the previously computed statistics in the stats gen component. All right, so in this slide, you can see the code for the trainer component. So our trainer uses the TensorFlow Estimator API to build a deep neural network classifier. Um, and this function will be called during the training cycles of your pipeline's execution. Um, it requires a module file that defines a trainer function. You can see that being passed here. And the corresponding module file that the user provides uses a generated feature schema and hyperparameters that the user provides to return uh, a trained DNN classifier. Uh, a spec that defines how to read the training data, and another spec for evaluation. And these specs are used downstream during model evaluation. Some typical model training parameters that an MLE here can work with include number of hidden layers, batch size, and number of training eval steps. And you can see some of these hyperparameters in the code snippet here. Some of the hyperparameters can be modified in the module file that's actually being passed. Um, currently, our component supports leveraging compute from GCP's AI platform, and we also support in-cluster training as well. Um, our platform also offers an integrated TensorBoard viewer, so after your training is complete, 
you can directly open the Tensor Board on Kubeflow to get insights into the training process, including relevant metrics and visualizations. So I hope the last few slides gave a good concrete example of how ML pipelines are written at Spotify using our infrastructure, specifically with the Spotify Kubeflow Platform's SDK for pipeline development and productionization. We do have more examples of the code for other components in the DAG displayed in the appendix section. And I'm happy to share this presentation on my LinkedIn profile or through another forum that makes sense so that you guys can check that out. But really quickly before we move into our next evolution and focus as a platform team, Let's quickly summarize our biggest learnings in our journey building out some of the ML infrastructure at Spotify. The first is that our most impactful projects have been a result of collaborations between infrastructure and ML teams. Working directly with use cases and getting quick feedback on what's most important has sped up a lot of our development from the building of our KF pipelines infrastructure to our feature and model serving toolkit. The second is that we have needed to be opinionated to build a better experience. And this is really difficult because there are so many tools and frameworks ML teams could use. But early on, we realized that everything was impossible and actually created a worse experience for our users that were onboarding because of all the potential choices they could pick from for an ML project, especially with respect to serving. So being opinionated allows us to create this more powerful and cohesive product experience and also makes ML projects more predictable with less custom code and lower rates of technical debt. Lastly, build for the future instead of only focusing on the world today. Obviously, this is easier said than done, but the ML industry is rapidly evolving. And while the Spotify Kubeflow platform has witnessed a lot of great adoption in the ML engineering community at Spotify and has supported the development and productionization of a lot of impactful business use cases, we still have a lot of work to do to support a more flexible platform that supports a variety of new frameworks in the open source community and not just one, but at the same time, still keeping our maintenance burden as a platform team manageable. So what's next for the ML platform at Spotify? One thing is for sure, we know that the next generation of audio personalization depends on our efforts as a platform to continue to democratize ML development across Spotify. And we still have a lot of work to do. Our original ML platform strategy focused primarily on the needs of ML engineers and specifically the productionization phase of the ML engineering journey to help reduce the maintenance burden of our ML teams across Spotify and free them up for more impactful ML development. But this focus did come at a cost. It meant less of a focus on non-ML engineers like data scientists and research scientists focused on ML and less of a focus on earlier model prototyping or exploration phases. Our user research has continuously shown that these tool combinations aren't perfectly suited for ML practitioners that lack familiarity with the TensorFlow ecosystem. Our research has also shown that it's, there's a lot of upfront work to actually set up a project using the current ML platform toolkit. And looking at these metrics, we can see that we have a total addressable market adoption of our ML infrastructure of 61.3% for machine learning engineers, which is great, but only a 26.9% adoption within the data scientist community and only a 13.3% adoption within the research scientist community. So these metrics show us that we have a clear opportunity to increase the adoption of and strengthen the value proposition of our supported ML infrastructure by now bringing more of a focus to ML users outside of the traditional ML engineer user group and investing more in the earlier stages of the model development life cycle. So how are we gonna get there? Um, we're going to start by broadening our focus beyond productionization to providing centralized infrastructure for model experimentation and prototyping for users such as data and research scientists that are more focused on model development instead of model operationalization. While we want to bring more focus to the earlier parts of the larger ML lifecycle, we also want to make sure that there is still a seamless transition to model progression and productionization. The opinionated workflow that we have right now and that we standardized with TensorFlow and TFX often requires significant code rewrites and a dedicated MLE in the loop. We want to remove this dependency to help support a less time-consuming workflow from model development all the way to production with new infrastructure offerings. We also want to broaden our support for many types of use cases by supporting infrastructure that is more flexible and aligned with the needs of researchers and data scientists focused on ML. Our platform meets the needs of supervised learning workflows quite well, but we want to broaden our support to enable reinforcement learning at scale, time series use cases, uh, natural language processing with frameworks like Hugging Face. We need to support ML use cases that may not fit the traditional supervised learning workflow to support our ML researchers in exploring various ML paradigms that can enhance the overall user experience of your in Atlas session with Spotify. As a platform team, we also want to invest into creating a more unified experience between our products. 
um, bringing some of the more experimentation capabilities data and research scientists are looking for in our user-facing UI, uh, known as ML Home, as just one example. And finally, we want to enable advanced paradigms like continuous training and deployment to empower ML innovation and create the foundation needed for more advanced modeling techniques. So that's it for me. Um, at Spotify, we have a lot of data and it's growing constantly. And all of that data is meaningful to continue to provide our users an awesome experience. And the number of use cases that leverage ML at Spotify is only really continuing to grow. Um, while Spotify scale affords some really amazing opportunities for our users, it also presents unique challenges that only come with scale. So if any of this work presented here today sounds interesting, um, you can apply to join our team. We have a few job openings, including a role for a senior MLE, a senior data engineer, and a full stack engineer. Um, you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn to understand how you can apply for these positions. Uh, to ask any questions related to the presentation here today, or just to stay connected with your larger ML journey. Thank you guys Tyler. so much. So awesome. And we have questions pouring in. So I hope everybody took down her email because, you know, we're not going to be able to get through all the questions, but we have, you know, a few minutes and I'm going to have a hard time selecting one, but I'm going to do my best. Um, so one question that somebody had is, if you were to pick one of the challenges um, as the biggest challenge or headache uh, you came across in building slash maintaining uh, the ML platform slash process, what would it be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges that we've been working with is as I mentioned, keeping our maintenance burden fairly low, but also empowering our users to innovate and use whatever framework works best for their ML problem type. So we've standardized around TensorFlow and TFX, again, to help users really leverage a template to go all the way from research to production in a very reliable and repeatable manner. But that precludes or that excludes some really, really um, innovative frameworks like you know, PyTorch, like Hugging Face, like Scikit-Learn. Um, that our users can't really leverage in our production infrastructure. So that's one of the biggest challenges that we're having right now. How do we keep our maintenance burden low and manageable, but at the same time empower our user community to leverage whatever framework makes the most sense to, to build impactful ML solutions at scale? That's a great answer. Um, I'll get in another question. This is an interesting sure. question. In the past years, uh, music recommendations seemed to drift quite fast uh, into genre niches. Um, the person who's asking the question doesn't notice this nowadays. And was that a specific target for improvement or just happened because of more data available? Yeah, I think that really just depends on and you as a user. I can't really speak to you know your the data that is being leveraged to, to provide personalizations for you. Um, but I will say Discover Weekly um, you know, really provides uh, uh, music that can fit outside of your traditional bounds of listening. So it's not that we're trying to be very similar and kind of only pr uh, present or personalize music that is similar to your current genre of choice. Um, Discover Weekly definitely tries to kind of expose you to new music. So I would say uh, that definitely depends on you as a user and what your personalizations look like, but no, that's not a consistent theme that we're going for across Spotify right now. Awesome. We only have one minute, so I'll ask for a pretty quick question. Um, sure. How do you handle model retraining and what are the challenges? I know that that is something that a lot of people have yeah. problems with. So um, we actually have a library uh, internal to Spotify which handles retrainings from pipeline executions. Um, it's called Luigi and it helps with orchestration on a uh, regular cadence. So um, once a user has a pipeline ready, they can actually integrate with Luigi to have your pipeline execute on a daily cadence or whatever cadence makes the most sense. So we do have uh, infrastructure at Spotify uh, for retraining as well.